G'day guys, welcome to the studio. This week we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're diving into traditional paints. And I really recommend that if you only work digitally, that you give this a shot. Because thinking about things differently really stimulates your brain. Um, the brain works in such a way that it compresses similar experiences down into a single memory, as far as I'm aware. Uh, for example, tell me uh, exact details of one time you drove to work. You won't be able to. You'd be able to tell me exactly what roads you take and how you get there, but it's really difficult to separate those memories into separate events. But what about that one time when your car broke down and you had to ride your bike to work? These one-off experiences or just different experiences really stand out in our minds. And I think we can use this to our advantage by mixing things up with our art to really help us remember. So when I started this painting, I took a couple of elements and I tried to shake them up a little bit so that I could keep it fresh because I've done quite a few oil paintings recently and I just wanted to see how I could change the process. So the first thing you will notice is that I started with a board that is very far from a white surface. And the second thing is the very hot crimson red underpainting. And this is called an imprimatura layer and it's something that I learned uh, the first time that I actually learned oil painting. I was taught to do a very detailed value study uh, underneath the painting to remove all of the stress when you move into the colors because you have a map. Now I wouldn't recommend using such a bright and vibrant underpainting if you're doing this for the first time. I would suggest more muted, subtle, desaturated tones like uh, burnt umber or maybe a burnt sienna or something like that. Very diluted with your paint thinner. But for this painting, I knew that I was going to be using some really bright greens and some varied kind of mid-tone greys. And I thought that a bit of red edging, a um, little bit of that showing through, would really create an energetic feeling for the painting. Because this is essentially a painting of a pile of rocks. But we're artists and we need to make even a pile of rocks look exciting. Uh, how do you do that? Well, you can use very subtle temperature changes to really liven things up and you can have very dramatic color changes uh, playing with complementaries and subtle harmonies and things like that that will just create this feeling of energy even in very static subject matter. So if you want to give this a shot I would recommend that you take a very desaturated version of the complementary of the main color of the piece. Uh, and you use that to tone your surface. So a very green verdant forest, you would take a very desaturated orange and sort of wash that over the whiteboard before you start painting. And then the goal is to paint your picture on top of that toned board. Uh, and you basically cover the whole thing, but there will be little parts where that orange shows through. And because it's surrounded by the green, uh, even though it was very desaturated when you put it on the board in the first place, it relative to the green will look very orange and vibrant and it just excites the eye of the viewer. So coming back to the piece now, I've focused almost entirely on the rocks at the beginning. I was unsure about how to handle the, the dark background because I wanted those eyes to really glow and I wanted them to glow blue. Uh, but I used a red uh, imprimatura layer and I really didn't want to start painting blue onto that surface until I was 100% sure that it was dry because if you mix a red and a blue you're going to get this grey purpley sludge uh, and you don't want that at a focal point that is so important to remain vibrant um, and it did end up hurting me just a little bit because as a good rule of thumb you should apply your lightest light and your darkest dark value onto the board uh, very early in the piece so that you can judge your values based off the extremes um, And what I did here I worked with the rocks for a very long time and then when I put in this black background layer I realized that the rocks were a little bit too light because the relative value uh, was dramatically different um, so I had to I messed around for a bit thinking, oh, maybe it'll look all right, maybe it'll look all right. But eventually I bit the bullet and I had to go in and slowly adjust the value and darken down all of these areas of the rocks. 
but it wasn't a complete waste because I was going to go back into those shadow areas anyway because I wanted to get a good variety of temperatures and these different grays in there because you don't want colors to be so flat and samey. You, you want things to be different. You want there to be variations. And the most important thing to have variation in is the temperature. You want slightly warmer areas and slightly colder areas next to one another because that adds another layer of excitement for the eye. And we want these rocks to look as exciting as a pile of rocks can possibly look. And another important point I wanted to make about this painting is that at times there has been quite a bit of detail in certain areas. Uh, and I'm sort of pushing and pulling the detail here. I might add some in and get some really nice textures, but then decide to just wipe it all away because it's drawing too much attention. And when you're doing something that's sort of an abstract shape, like a pile of rocks, it, it's important to think about these things. You need to control your detail. More detail does not equal a better painting. It's very important to understand that the correct detail in the right places is always going to feel more polished than the correct detail in all the places. Details are like icing, you know? It's the best part of the cake, but you don't want to just eat icing. You know, it'll taste like crap. You want the cake because just like colors, everything is relative. So if you want to have that exciting icing flavor, you need to have the boring cake flavor to compare it to. So long story short, control your details and don't be afraid to just wipe them out, even if they look good by themselves. So at this point, I'm pretty happy with where the rocks are and it's time to move on to the rest of the painting. I want to bring it up to the same level so that I can compare the detail levels and just get a feeling for how the final image will look uh, so I can make those finer adjustments to the rocks later. Uh, so I got stuck into the tree and one of the interesting things that happened here while I was trying to get a feeling of the light receding into the darkness is that that red um, background painting really started to shine through in some areas and it led me in this interesting direction it made the trees arms look like these weird alien fingers uh, and it gave the whole painting this mood of otherworldliness that i really liked so i decided to lean into it and just leave those limbs red with the underpainting and it gave a really cool effect that i wouldn't have thought of uh, had i tried to plan it from the beginning but there's those bob ross happy accidents that you just have to look for and let them happen so moving into the final details on the piece now, we're finally addressing these eyes and changing them to the blue that they were originally intended to be. Uh, and I think it has a really good effect. So all that's left to do now is to try and enhance the mood as much as possible. I'm working a, a lot on the trees in the distance and trying to get the most volume out of the trees. I want to make it feel as though that darkness is creeping in. I want it to feel almost claustrophobic and mysterious. So with these final details, we are done. Uh, thank you for watching guys, really appreciate it. Here is the final image for you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, the more this channel grows, the more pressure there is for me to just keep on creating content for you guys. So light a fire under my ass and hit that subscribe button. And if that's not a good enough reason, what if I told you that I'm currently working on an awesome dragon painting video? It's going to be more of a tutorial. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, then I guess I'll see you next time. Bye.